What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today I'm on Lake Ludwig in Central Arkansas and you've never seen me in a video on this lake but it's an awesome little lake, has a lot of good offshore structure and today we're gonna be doing a three hour challenge video out here, hopefully put some good fish in the boat. So if this is your first time checking out one of my three hour challenge videos, the way they work is that I give myself three hours to try to put five keeper bass in the boat. And before I actually start fishing, I'll spend an hour driving around the lake scouting spots. And so today on Ludwig, I spent an hour driving around the lake graphing offshore structure. And one thing that I want to call out about Lake Ludwig is that it doesn't have a contour line map on the Navionics card or the Lake Master card for my Hummingbird unit. And so I didn't have any way to see what the bottom of the lake looked like using those map sources. But I did find online that there is the CMAP Genesis community edited maps. And I'll leave the link right here. And they actually had this map online for free and this isn't the actual c map software that you can buy for your graph this is just community edited maps someone just drove around recorded their sonar and then put this file up online and you can actually download these maps apparently if you sign up for an account put them on your Lowrance unit if you have a Lowrance and you can use these maps and so i don't have a Lowrance unit but i did take some screenshots of this map before i went out in the lake so i could get the feel for what the contour lines were like and so if you go on Navionic and don't find your lake with contour lines on it and it doesn't have a lake master chip for it or anything like that check this genesis social maps app and try to download them there you might find some contour line maps for your lake but even if your lake doesn't have a contour line map for it you can still find fish offshore using your electronics and that's actually how i learned to fish offshore a lot of the lakes i learned on didn't have any contour line maps and what i normally do in that situation is i'll just put my boat in the 15 feet to 20 foot depth range and i will just find that using my depth finder and then i'll just kind of zigzag back and forth between maybe 10 to 20 feet of water and i'll use my down imaging my side imaging to look for any interesting cover or structure that's on the bottom and if i do see something interesting i'm gonna mark it and so i went all around this lake trying to find anything that looked interesting bait fish fish cover and I did find some pretty interesting stuff. I found some areas that had some rock on them, found some really good looking brush piles, as well as some other areas that had fish but didn't have any cover or really bait around them. And so I was able to find a lot of stuff just graphing around for an hour without really using a contour line map. I kind of had a general idea of where the places were from that Genesis social map, but really I just drove around almost randomly and that's sometimes the best way to find some of these hidden away brush piles, hidden away pieces of cover structure that maybe don't even show up on the contour line map. And so I definitely was able to find some interesting stuff. We'll get into exactly what I found here in a minute when I start fishing, but it definitely pays off to graph offshore even without a contour line map. And one more thing I want to mention before we jump into the fishing is that when I'm graphing offshore structure and I spend about an hour graphing, I like to practice good waypoint management. And so what I actually do is have preset icons on my Hummingbird Onyx unit. You can do the same thing with a Lowrance unit, and then you have to manually change the icons if you have a Hummingbird Helix unit. But what I'll do is set different icons for brush, for bait fish, for fish, and for rock. And I'll use these different icons to let me know what all the things I'm marking are. And I'll also color coordinate them. And so in my case, if I mark something as white, that just means that I saw like a brush pile or rocks down there, but nothing special. If I mark them as green, it means I saw some fish around there. It looked pretty decent. I should probably check it out. And then if I make them red, that means I need to stop there. This is the juice. It looks really good. There's a bunch of fish there. I need to fish it. And so I ended up marking two areas with a red brush pile marker while I was out here and then I dropped some green rocks and some green brush as well so I definitely have a couple spots I'm really confident in and then I have a few other areas that I think I can check out offshore so we're going to start in one of those red brush piles to start off and see if we can get some fish in the boat 
Okay guys, so I pulled up on the first spot here and as you can see, we have bright bluebird skies, no wind. Water temperature is about 73 degrees. We're actually in the second day after the first major cold front of the fall. It was like 30 degrees the last two or three mornings and so these fish are not gonna be in an aggressive mood. And so I grabbed around a lot out here. I found probably five or 10 brush piles and some rock cover. And in these post front conditions when it's sunny, no wind, these fish like to get around the shade and they like to get around some sort of cover. And so if you can find rock piles, brush piles, or grass that's going to be a really good place in these post, post front conditions these fish are going to get in and just given the high sun as well it's just going to be a really good day for a slow bottom bait so i'll show you my baits right now okay so as far as my rods i got rigged up i came here not really knowing exactly what the fish are going to be doing i brought a little crankbait just a flat side crankbait as well as a square bill just in case i need to fish shallow but it looks like that's not going to be a factor today so i'm just gonna leave those rods strapped up but the rods i think i'm probably going to focus on today are going to be my offshore rods like my three quarter ounce football head jig classic bait I actually put a striking rodent trailer on the back this time to give it a little bit bulkier profile in this post front conditions it normally is better to have a little bit more bulk a little bit less action so that's a pretty good setup there you guys know i love that three quarter ounce jig next up just have a uh, big swim bait on here just in case these fish are suspended i might throw this three quarter ounce jig head with the five uh 5.8 inch kitech swim bait down there and then the last thing i have tied up special for today is a new rig i've never used before it's called the tokyo rig and i actually got this given to me by one of the guys at bass camp anthony so shout out to anthony for uh, sending me this rig or showing me this rig and he gave me a couple to use and this is a pretty interesting rig i'll get into it today if i start catching some but just a little strike king menace grub on there just to kind of see if i get throw some a little more finesse and maybe try to coax some of these fish into biting if i can't get into biting the jig so those are the baits i started out with may pull out more today not really sure kind of went with some natural colors because the water clarity here about two foot of visibility so we should be good to go if i get my troll motor up and so i'm gonna line up on the spot i'm gonna get to fishing go. first fish of the day right here on this brush pile is that a good one? Oh, not that one that didn't take long saw those fish down there threw that jig down the brush pile first fish of the day not too bad guys pretty easy if you graph around a little bit nice little 14 inch bass not a big one but hey we're not fishing this lake in like two years and coming out here for an hour and graphing catch fish within the first four minutes isn't too bad but you can get this guy back in the lake and get another one Whew. here we go guys nice fish that one just came on this little football jig straight out of this brush pile and you can see on my graph actually there you go, but you can actually see some fish are showing up on my graph here in about 20 foot of water. You can see these lines down here. I had some comments about my lines looking weird on my graph in my last video or a couple videos ago. I fixed my transducer. There's a little bit of an issue with it, but as you can see now, there's some nice lines underneath the boat. Those are fish. They're streaking underneath the boat right now in about 20 foot. I thought I might actually be on top of these fish a little bit, which I might be, but that fish just came on a football jig out of this brush pile right here. And I'm just basically throwing that jig out there getting it down into that cover, the rocks, the tree that was down there. You actually saw the fish on the graph in the image I showed. And I'm just dragging that thing super, super slow, trying to tease out any of these fish that are just, you know, kind of in the mood to bite. These fish are not gonna be super aggressive on a day like this. This, when you have these really bad conditions, you know, two days after a front, cold front, bright bluebird skies we're here in the middle of the day like again not not the best conditions to be fishing but if you find some cover like brush find some stuff that's offshore you can normally get some fish in the boat and catch them if you have enough water clarity which here we have again two two and a half feet of visibility which is perfect so here's a look at the brush pile that I'm fishing right now. And you can actually see several fish around this brush pile. And when I saw this, immediately I was like, oh, this is a good spot. I put that red waypoint marker on it. And you can tell that there are fish around this brush pile because you can see these dots that are on the side of the brush pile. And these dots are separated by like a centimeter to about a quarter inch of space between the dots. And that's a good indicator that these are gonna be bass rather than another species. And they're also spread more horizontally than vertically. That's another good indicator that these are bass and not, let's say, crappie. And so here's an image actually of some crappie I found. And you can see they're very closely stacked together and they're stacked vertically 
more than horizontally. And so these are some indicators that these are bass and you can just see all these dots around this brush pile. This was an awesome looking area and I was super excited to fish it. And so you can see that it can pay off to graph offshore if you know what you're looking for because you can find some groups of fish and get on fish really quickly even with just an hour of graphing. Tokyo rig. Oh, came off. No. Oh, that was number two on the Tokyo rig. Is it not? The hook didn't get all the way through. Crap. That was a fish. I'm gonna have to switch out this hook. I'm. I put this big, straight shank, flipping hook on there because I thought I was gonna go flipping with this thing. I actually changed the lakes yesterday, so I need to go back to like a regular Texas or a, like a regular wide gap hook. But crap, that was a good one too. Okay, that was pretty painless. Just kind of switched out the hook here, guys, to a little smaller hook. This is actually the hook that came stock with this rig when Anthony gave it to me. So I probably should just kept that one on rather than trying to mess around and changing out hooks. But uh, I was kind of planning on flipping with this Tokyo rig, kind of fishing shallower. But it seems like uh, these fish cannot really get this hook in their mouth very well when they're that deep, or at least I can't get a good hook set on them with that hook. It might not be the hook though, it could be, you know, the rig itself. I'm not really sure how good the hookup ratio is with all this, this wires and all this stuff on this rig, but I'm not sure how all of the equipment stuff will affect this rig if the fish won't get in their mouth very well or what's going on, but I really like the concept of this rig. And so hopefully, we can figure it out and figure out the exact combination of the weight, the hook, all those things, get these fish to bite it. But pretty good sign when I threw that thing probably 10 times and I already caught a fish on it. So, or well, didn't catch it. I lost a fish on it, but it's still not too bad. So we need to keep chunking it. See if we can't get another one to eat it. Okay, so first brush pile produced two fish. One came off, one got in the boat. Not very big ones, but still some decent fish. And so fortunately I don't have any more red brush piles. They don't just grow on trees. Oh, they do. But anyways, um, I do have some green brush piles. And what I mean by that is the color I marked them for my waypoints. So I don't have any more of like the red ones, which I'm like must stop here. It's really good. But I do have some of the ones that I marked as green. Like I saw some fish around them. They should be decent. And maybe the brush piles that have less fish on them will have bigger fish. I'm not really sure. But I'm going to keep running these brush piles because it seems like that might be the deal. I kind of stumbled on it right off the bat here. And so hopefully if I run all the brush piles, I'll put more fish in the boat. Oh, man, he hit that jig hard. Got another one. There's a bunch of them down there. Uh, that thing fall back down. Another one grabbed it. Not a big one, but they're fish. So they're definitely bass though. There we go. Number two, we're just going by a 12 inch size limit guys today. Not going for Giants, we're just trying to get five in the boat, especially in these three hour challenges. But they're a nice keeper right there. I need to get that jig back down there because there are a bunch of fish on this brush pile. I see them all over the grass. And man, first fish came down there, he just smacked it. And I got it down there, let I set the hook, let that thing fall back down in the brush pile, shook it for a minute. Another one picked it up. I saw probably about 15 fish in this brush pile. And oh man, this is awesome. I uh, only found a couple brush piles really on this lake. I didn't find a ton of them, but what I'll probably end up doing if I keep catching them on these brush piles is I'll just keep graphing for more because this is what they're on. I'm catching so many fish. I just need to go maybe even take 30, 45 minutes to just locate a few more brush piles. And it's worth the time if I can pull up and catch a fish, you know, first, second cast, every single one of them. And here's a look at this other brush pile I was fishing. Similar to the last brush pile, you can see these dots there around the brush pile. Again, looks really good. I can see several fish around this brush top and actually graphed over the spot before I fished it to make sure those fish were still there because I came back about 45 minutes to an hour after I had originally gra graphed it. So I wanted to make sure that those fish were still there and that they were set up properly. And they were, and I was able to throw down there and catch a fish right away. And so it's always good to re-graph areas as well after you found them to make sure the fish are still there and they're still set up in a way that you can catch them. So I didn't manage to get any more fish out of that brush pile. So I decided to start running more brush piles and try to duplicate this pattern. And I had marked three or four more brush piles that looked okay, but none that looked that great. And I pulled up 
fished each one for about five, ten minutes a piece, made four or five casts with the football jig, four or five casts with the Tokyo rig, and I actually didn't get any bites in the other brush piles I marked. So I decided to go back to the first brush pile I fished where I caught that first keeper and lost that one in the Tokyo rig to see if I could catch more fish after letting those brush piles rest for about an hour. Fish out of that same brush pile. This brush pile is loaded up. First cast back over here. I might just need to be able to rotate these same two brush piles and get my limit of fish. It's another keeper right there. Again, not big ones, but oh, it's right in the eye. I got some water straight in the eye, but uh, not big ones, but it's another keeper here, just a little 12 incher. And so, has number three should be number four that's a barely a 12 incher but it's definitely a 12 incher so that's number three right there guys there we go get this guy back in the lake okay next cast back up in that brush pile first cast i threw in there got bit i was throwing in another little brush pile i marked as i was out there but first cast in this brush pile get one to bite so there's definitely a good group on this brush top i just don't have very many like it. Not knowing this lake, not being out here very often, and only graphing for an hour, doesn't always lend itself to having a lot of spots to fish, especially offshore. And you know, really an hour of graphing offshore, it seems like a lot to a lot of guys, but that's not very much time at all because usually I'll find, let's say, 10 spots in an hour of graphing, and maybe only one or two of them actually has some fish on it. I need to pay attention to my bait here, but, uh, but only a couple of them will have fish on it. And so, a lot of times, you might graph for hours and hours and hours, four or five hours, before you actually get enough spots for a day of fishing. And so, like right now, we're kind of at the mercy of these fish of whether or not they want to bite. And also, we're kind of at the mercy of the luck, I guess, of finding a spot with big fish. Right now, these fish I'm finding on this brush top, these brush tops are really small. And so, to find the bigger fish is just hitting more spots, graphing more, finding more spots to fish. And you, I can't guarantee every time I pull up on the spot that I'm gonna catch four pounders. So you just have to run a ton of different areas, and graph a lot to find more offshore spots. Got him. Oh my gosh. I didn't think that was a fish. There we go, number four on the Tokyo rig. That's what I'm talking about, not big ones. I'm actually floating right up on top of this brush pile, but uh, on little menace grub with that Tokyo rig. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Trying new rigs, that should be number five because I got another one about that size in the Tokyo rig earlier, but that's a nice fish right there. So I'm talking about, nice one. I'm literally up on top of this brush pile now, but uh, I was hopping the thing over the limbs right here. I was trying to just work a little bit closer on it because hitting it from different angles sometimes helps. And I caught a little bit too close. So I was kind of having trouble hitting the exact cast and fish was in there. So this brush pile right here has a bunch of fish just right in it. It's just like 13 feet of water, nothing crazy, but they're all over this thing. And that Tokyo rig is getting some extra bites for me. Seems like they, when they don't eat that football jig, I can follow up with that Tokyo rig, sometimes get a few extra bites, which is really awesome because something that can kind of give me another weapon as I'm out in the lake. And you know, this Tokyo rig is kind of cool because I can throw a bunch of different baits on it. Like right now I'm fishing this menace grub on there, but you know, I could potentially switch it up and throw a 10 inch worm on it. I can throw a, um, you know, a beaver style bait, all kinds of different baits on this thing. And nice thing about it too, is you can customize the weight on it. But the thing I really like about it is it comes through the brush actually really well. And what I'm thinking is that when you're in these brush piles, what you can do is cast that thing out there, pull it up to the brush pile. And then because that 
bait is suspended over the top of that weight. You can get that weight to hang on that brush pile and just sit there and just shake that thing in the brush pile. And that'll give that bait a lot more action. And so when you're fishing specific targets, I think this Tokyo rig could be really, really good. And so I'm excited to try this out. I'm gonna be throwing this a lot more. I'm gonna keep it on the front deck of my boat going forward just because I feel like it's something different that these fish aren't seeing. And I can just, you know, see it being really effective as long as they don't get too spooked by the uh, hardware, which I don't think they are just based on what I'm seeing today. Okay guys, so I got one hour left in this challenge and so I have four fish in the boat. I think I can probably put at least one more in the boat. I'm gonna go run that brush pile where I caught one fish earlier, see if I can finish out my limit really quick. I have another brush pile over here I wanna check out and then after that, I'm gonna try to see if I can change up the type of cover I'm fishing and maybe the depth of water as well. Try to put a bigger fish in the boat. But again, when you're fishing offshore like this, it's not always going to happen where you just pull up offshore and start catching good fish right away. A lot of times you have to weed through 10, 15, 20 areas is to you find the brush pile or the rock pile or something that has the bigger fish and it's just kind of random and so as you see in these three hour challenge videos a lot of the fish i'm catching are not really that big compared to my normal videos and the reason for that is because i'm just coming out here grabbing for an hour and trying to catch the fish and catch whatever i can put in the boat and a lot of times in my regular videos i don't even show the fish of the size i'm catching i'm catching 12 13 14 inches i don't even put those in the video and so what's happening is that i'm ignoring the spots that i think are the small fish and focusing on the big fish areas which i'll talk about more in my other videos but in these three hour challenges the name of the game is getting five fish in the boat so hopefully that's what's going to be happening more often than not even even if i don't get five fish in the boat if i can get two or three fish in the boat pretty quick in three hours that'll definitely help you guys out when you're fishing tournaments or if you're just having trouble catching fish in general this is number five stay on fish <laughs> Not a big one again, but that is number five right there. First limit of my three hour challenge series. That is a squeaker 12 incher again, probably, but that is definitely number five. Got them on the football jig out of that same brush pile. So, really, all my fish come out of two brush piles, and that is pretty typical this time of year when I find them offshore. But nice to get five fish in the boat. So, I'm talking about pretty much right after i pulled up on the spot within the first couple casts with this football jig with the rodent on it got another fish and so these brush piles definitely have some fish in them i don't know if the size of these fish is gonna be any different let me get a new trailer on here but like i was saying i don't know if the size of these fish can be any different if i fish different brush piles or just find new brush piles but i did want to talk you through the baits i was throwing today first up i'm just throwing the three quarter ounce football head jig this is the bass x brand football jig it's a local company that is in my area and i get my football jigs made by them really really good jigs and i'm just pairing that with a strike king rodent in the green pumpkin or i think it's the double header color i'm just cutting off like you know an inch off the top and i'm just feeding that on the jig and this rodent is a really good bait when you're fishing pressured fish especially in the fall it doesn't have as much action but you can feed that on there it gives it a little bit more bulky of a profile and looks really really good and then the other rig i was throwing again is that tokyo rig showed at the beginning of the video but just to kind of go through it again it's just a wire with a half ounce tungsten slip sinker, got a striking menace scrub, a three out hook here, and you can find a link to all these baits down in the description below, and also link a video on how to rig the Tokyo rig, because it's kind of interesting how you do that too. So uh, pretty good stuff there. And so let's get back to it and see if I can put another fish in the boat off this brush pile. Now, that being said, now that I have a limit in the boat, I do want to try to put some bigger fish in the boat. So I'm just looking in front of me here. There's actually some really nice shady pockets just uh, with some grass up here. I'm seeing some shad kick around up there. I'm going to throw a buzz bait down this bank just real quick. And I'm going to try to maybe throw that big swim bait. Just throw something else to try to get a bigger fish in the boat. Because there's definitely some fish out here offshore i just need to find the right bait or the right type of structure to get them on so i'm going to burn through this pocket with a buzz bait really quick and then we're going to go keep graphing and try to find one more spot where i can get some good ones got him good one get out of there fish Oh, yeah, Lee, that fish came out and crushed that jig. 
<laughs> That's what I'm talking about, guys. Put that swim jig on, came up in the grass, heard that fish bust back in there, saw the fish back in there as well, saw the bait back in there. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Fish the moment. Gotta change it up. If that offshore bite just producing little ones, go to the shallow bite, guys. Don't get stubborn and stick to one thing. It's always good to put five fish in the boat, but it's also fun getting some tanks. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Let's see here, about 470 is what I'm seeing right there, guys. Don't know if you could see that very well, but a four pound, four and three quarter pounder, beautiful fish. Let's get that guy back in the lake. There we go, wow. That was an awesome bite, guys. I saw that fish come from like three feet in the grass to come crush that jig. Just fishing a little 3 8 ounce black and blue hack attack swim jig. And guys, if you can't tell, jigs are one of my favorite baits in the whole world. And the reason for that is you can catch him on a jig in the grass up shallow. You can catch him offshore in the brush piles. So many applications for a jig, it's insane. And all I was doing, guys, I'm gonna spin the boat around here. Man, but all I was doing was taking this jig casting it up into the edge of this grass and the reason i decided to fish this grass is if you look it's very shaded through here we have some nice shade and like i talked about earlier with these post front fish they like to get around shade get around cover and right now it's three in the afternoon we are warming up the water's warming up it's up to 74 degrees now and so with that two degree jump in water temperature i thought those fish might you know slide back up start trying to feed up here shallow on some of these shad and boom right away got them on the jig again tried to throw the buzz bait in there didn't quite think it was gonna be as efficient as the swim jig and so tied that swim jig on threw it up there that's what I'm talking about guys that is so awesome that was such a cool strike too I cannot believe how awesome that strike was how that fish just came forever out of that grass to get that bait so after catching that big fish on the swim jig, I had about 35 minutes left in this challenge and I wanted to try to repeat that pattern as best I could. So what I did is look for other shady pockets with grass and I fished that swim jig through them. And there weren't that many shady pockets available on the lake, but I did manage to get three more fish to swipe at my lure. Unfortunately, none of them actually committed and I didn't catch any more fish in the remaining 35 minutes but i do feel like some of the fish were a little bit better size than the ones i was finding offshore and maybe if i wasn't fishing in the post front conditions i might have been able to get some of those fish to commit so definitely was a good pattern but maybe not the best pattern for today i think that offshore bite was still probably my best bet even though i did catch that one good one four three two one there we go guys that is it end of the two hour or three hour keep saying two hour three hour challenge had a blast today out here on lake ludwig it was fun finding those fish in those brush piles pulling up and catching several fish off one spot then figured out a little deal at the end here with some fish on the swim jig in the grass not sure if that bite would have been there all day i have a feeling that the bite would have got better and better as the day went on but i probably could have caught some if i had started doing that but either way it's definitely a fun way to catch some fish and so i did lose one fish that would have been a decent fish to uh call out with and then i also had three good blow-ups in the grass that didn't commit and so Either way, it was a really, really good day. Caught him on the swim jig, caught him on the football jig, and on the Tokyo rig. And so if y'all enjoyed this video and you wanna see more of my three hour challenge videos and other videos where I teach you how to find fish and catch good fish, both offshore and shallow, subscribe to my YouTube channel here, leave a like on the video, leave a comment, letting me know what you liked most about this new video format. And so thanks again for checking out the video and I'll see y'all in the next one.